Welcome, everyone, to this program called Partnering with Universal Beings Discover How to Receive Guidance from Other Dimensions to Improve Your Life and the World. I'm here with Patricia Coder Robles and Suzanne Kiesman. And welcome to the program, Patricia and Suzanne. Well, I'm honored to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. It's just great to be part of this program. Okay. And I'm going to uh, properly introduce them here in just one second. So, We've also been working with Patricia and Suzanne on an acclaimed eight-week masterclass for those who want to go deeper with them. We'll tell you more about that a little later, so be sure to stay with us till the end. But for now, let's focus on the exciting things that we're going to be diving into with them in this moment. I'm going to introduce my special guest now. Patricia Coder Robles is an internationally known spiritual teacher sharing the messages from the beings of light in the realms of illumined truth. She is also co-founder and president of the nonprofit educational organization, Era of Peace, and the annual World Congress on Illumination now in its 36th year. So great to have you with us, Patricia. Thank you. And my other special guest, Suzanne Giesman, is also a highly respected spiritual teacher and medium. She has written 13 books on spirituality and life after death, and her transition from senior military officer to her current life is featured in the award-winning documentary, Messages of Hope, based on her own memoir. She is also the founder of the Awakened Way Teachings and was included on the 2022 Watkins list of the 100 most spiritually influential people on the earth. Welcome again, Suzanne. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so we've got a lot of important ground to cover. Let's uh, just dive right in here. Uh, Patricia, I'm gonna start with you. Okay. You were a successful and highly respected family therapist when you first received the call to begin sharing messages from the beings of light with the world. You've been doing this for over two decades now, reaching hundreds of thousands all over the planet and guiding them in the process of evolving into their highest selves. Could you tell us a little more about the universal beings whose messages and guidance you share and how you came to be the vehicle through which their wisdom comes to the world? Yes, I'll be happy to. Those magnificent beings of light are just our sisters and brothers that have evolved to a higher level of consciousness that are assisting us in our life path, not doing things for us, but guiding us and teaching us so that we will learn how to do these magnificent evolutionary steps back to the heart of God for ourselves. And they are all different levels of evolution and consciousness. And they have different titles depending on their service to the light. And there are beings known as crowns, thrones, principalities, cosmic beings, solar logos, galactic beings, archangels, seraphim, cherubim, all graded orders of angels, ascended masters, and the galactic federation of light and the I am presence of every man, woman, and child, every son and daughter of God throughout the whole of creation. And as you can see, the sons and daughters of God are kind of the lower totem pole, and the other beings of light are like college professors compared to us being more like kindergarten students. And one of the things that, that helps with this, I've had that intuitive inner guidance probably all my life, but one of the things that began really resonating with me was the understanding of the universal law that we've probably all heard about, which is called as above, so below. And in the physical plane of earth, none of us are supposed to go through all the different fields of science and academics, uh, through trial and error without the guidance and assistance of teachers and professors to guide us along the way who have gone before us and learned and then taught us so that we can then learn and in turn share that information with those on the path behind us. And so as we began, as I began meditating and, and contemplating this, there was a time in my life many decades ago when there was a very tumultuous uh, outer world at that moment. It's very similar to what's going on now. It seems like every facet of life was evolving at some level in chaos. 
And at that time during meditation, the beings of light that I communicate with and I refer to often as the company of heaven said that it was time for them to begin teaching to the masses of humanity the esoteric teachings that they had shared with a relatively small portion of humanity through the various mystery schools. And now it was time in the evolution of humanity for these esoteric teachings to be considered exoteric, which means literally shared with everyone in the world who was interested about that. And they asked me if I would be willing to share what I was receiving from them without exception to anyone that was interested. And I was very humbled by that and very grateful for the opportunity to share the information that they were sharing with me. And they made it very clear to me, and this is a critical part of my teaching, that I was not being given this responsibility because I am more advanced than any of my other sisters and brothers or any more evolved. And the information they were sharing with me was not considered channeling. And I don't have supernatural extrasensory perception, but rather that what I was doing, sharing with humanity, was our divine birthright and available to each and every person on this planet. In fact, they said the reason I was being selected for this responsibility is because I am no different than everybody else on the planet. And that my mission was to present this information from the Illumined Truth in ways that would help people realize that this information is available to each and every one of us. And that as we begin to awaken and as we begin to connect with this, we will get that direct guidance from our own I am presence. So these beings of light are our sisters and brothers that have evolved to a higher level of evolution that are teaching and assisting us on this critical moment in the Earth's evolution as we are being inspired to remember who we are and why we are here so that we can fulfill our divine mission on this planet. Boy, beautiful. Uh, thank you, Patricia. And uh, Suzanne, I'm gonna come on over to you here. You, you used to, of course, be a Naval commander and an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staffs and even flew on Air Force One, but then your whole life shifted to what you do now, helping hundreds of thousands across the world to connect more deeply with universal consciousness and their own soul through your Awakened Way teachings. Can you tell us a little about the higher beings who communicate with you and how you came to make this tremendous detour on your own life path? Yes, indeed, Steve. I would agree with Patricia that there's no hierarchy here, even with those we connect with. They just want us to share the messages of love and connection. And the beings who I communicate with are also beings of light, but so are we here in our bodies. And I actually couldn't tell you their names. Sometimes I'm able to identify a few of them, but the wisdom that comes from them is so clearly beyond anything that I could access that I've come to trust them. And it's my greatest honor to share with others that we all have access to this wisdom because we're all souls. I didn't know this during my naval career. And what I love and what I've been taught by my, my team of light beings is that each of us can reach a specific segment of humanity with our own uh, qualities that we bring to the table. And my left brain background, wearing that uniform for 20 years, seems now to be attracting those who wouldn't normally turn to higher guidance. And I love that. I'm able to reach those who are floundering around a bit like I used to and show them that there is another way to face our day-to-day -day lives. And that's to realize that we are part of something so much greater and that each of us can make a difference in our own way by tuning in to this team of helpers that's available to everyone. I would be lost if I didn't sit each day now and connect. It's so easy to get caught up in the drama. I know that that so many people who are listening right now know what it's like to feel only human, but connecting with those who have been human and are now 
higher beings show us that we are so much more than just these physical bodies. So it's my greatest joy now to to have turned up the intuition, to be able to tap in instantly to this higher guidance, to their wisdom for the bigger picture that we don't always get in our limited state here. But just like Patricia said, I didn't know this was available before, but once you open up to it, you realize that we all have access to this. So it's not a special gift. It's an ability that all of us have. And that's why I love programs like Humanities Team is offering to show us how to tap into that. Yeah, boy, beautiful. Thank you that you're both uh, sharing really uh, one of uh, a critical thing here, which is that which is actually why we're doing this program, because you you it's amazing the work you're both doing in the world, of course. But what you're inviting uh, us all to really it's a level playing field to to come down, to do this work, to lift the veil, to be a bridge to loved ones, angels, guides, et cetera. Uh, and uh, where we do this together and raise our vibration, you know, guess what? We, this whole uh, conscious planet that uh, is our dream, you know, and our destiny, we uh, we advance toward that. So um, Patricia, I'm gonna come back over to you. I know many people out there are amazed to know these universal beings not only exist, but have messages for us and wanna help us both evolve as individuals and as a species. Can you share a couple of the most potent messages that these advanced beings have for humanity and our future on planet Earth during this challenging time? Yes, I think the most critical message coming forth from the heavenly realms is that they are trying to awaken within us the remembrance of our purpose and reason for being on Earth at this time, that we have literally been preparing for lifetimes to be in this physical plane. And they have shared that every single purpose, every single person on this planet is here because we have been specifically selected. And that means every man, woman, and child to assist with the awakening and with the transformation of this planet back into her planet of light that she was in the beginning before our fall from grace. And so when people say, well, who am I in this overall scheme of things? It isn't that we're more evolved or more special. It's that because of our life experiences, the beings of light said our father, mother, God selected us and turned away other sons and daughters that were volunteering to be born because they felt that because of our life experiences, we had a better chance of staying focused on the light and coming from a place of love and our heart-based God self in the face of all adversity, knowing that in this outer world, the negativity, the human miscreations, the thing that we have miscreated by choosing to use our creative faculties of thought and feeling in ways that are not based in love. The negativity and the pain that resulted from that has to be pushed to the surface to be transmuted back into light. And then we will be able to co-create the heart-based patterns for the new world that we're talking about. And so the beings of light are empowering us to know that it is not a fluke that we are here. So that when we feel that we're not of value or that we don't have power, we don't have the ability to make a difference, that's simply not true. Not only that, but another thing they're awakening and reminding us of as they re-empower within us that we are not worthless sinners and worms in the dust, but rather that we are beloved sons and daughters of God and that all our father, mother, God have is ours. They are reiterating the significance of understanding that we are one and there is no separation. That every thought, word, action, or feeling we express in a, is, affects every other part of life on the planet and that what one person is thinking or saying is affecting the whole of creation. So we are powerful beyond our knowing. There is no such thing as us and them. So for us to try to harm any other 
part of life or put ourselves above or before any other part of life, it is an illusion and a miscreation that is perpetuating the pain and suffering on earth. So they're trying to awaken us to our true God reality and to remind us that every other facet of life is also an intelligent aspect of our Father, Mother, God. Boy, so many important things you're covering there, Patricia, that um, which which we want to be mindful of that we're we're not victims. And it, it's easy with all of these things going on in the world, Supreme Court decisions and shooters and uh, a lack of gun control and Ukraine war and climate change and on and on and on to. Uh, to fall into this whole victim trap, and then we then we're no good to ourselves or anybody. And instead, to really, as you as you're sharing here, that there was an invitation that we were one of the few that that came down at this time to play a role. That we, uh, if we will accept that role, open ourselves to it, accept it, and step into it. Uh, that the, first, the the it's incredibly fruitful for us and our family just to start with. Uh, but then as well, we're in position to play this role that we need to play with the collective to to create this glorious new future, which was the whole idea in the first place. So, yeah, thank you for for uh, for for speaking to it. What an important message. Uh, and Suzanne, is it true that almost anyone can learn to receive these kinds of messages from these higher intelligences? And if so, is there an exercise you could share for people to do on their own to help them begin to develop their ability. Absolutely true. Again, because we all have the same equipment and it's called the soul. In the human form, we are limited awareness, but the soul, a definition of it is spacious awareness. So we simply need to learn to shift our focus from the limited human viewpoint to the more expanded viewpoint of the soul. When we can learn to do that instantly, we change our point of view and we see with a higher perspective. So a daily practice that gets us out of our conditioned human behavior is absolutely critical to remembering that we have this ability to connect, that we're never alone. And one of the greatest practices that I've found to do that is a simple three minutes a day of shutting out the external world and simply being present. I've given this an acronym on the Military people love acronyms, and it's just an easy way to remember this practice. And it's called the SIP of the divine, where SIP stands for sit in peace. I love that it's just a three minute practice. And I like to ask people, you know, you probably start your day with a special drink, the same every day, either coffee or tea or a smoothie. And it takes you about three minutes to prepare it maybe a little longer to drink it. So people who say, I don't have time to meditate have no excuse when it comes to sitting in peace with and as the divine every day. If all of you listening could commit to doing this sip of the divine practice for three weeks, I know you would find that it starts to transform your life because the simple practice of sitting in peace without your mind wandering to all of those challenges that face everyone in a human body, creates space so that throughout the rest of your day, you're more aware to the guidance that is coming to you all the time, but you can't hear it through the chatter. So the sip of the divine simply asks you to carve out three minutes to find a quiet space. It can even be in your car as long as you're not driving. Set a timer for three minutes and then sit quietly and get centered with the breath. I found that if you exhale longer than you inhale, you automatically drop into a nice relaxed state. Once you're in that relaxed state, after one or two breaths, your eyes are closed, move your awareness out of the head and into the heart area. You'll right away feel an expanded state. And from this place, knowing that you're connected to some source of higher guidance, and you will discover this the more you do the practice, ask the direct question, what is it I need to know now? It's a beautiful question because we don't know what we don't know. And then you simply listen. If more people would stop and listen for several minutes a day, you would be astounded at what you hear. 
Now your own thoughts may start to float in. I like to picture those like clouds floating across the sky. As they do, don't resist them, just notice them. And in between your conditioned thoughts, you will start to notice insights that you wouldn't have thought of. Recognize answers to questions. They may come as thoughts, they may come as images, feelings, or simply knowing. When you have such a response, I do what I call pulling the thread and engage whoever it is that put that insight into your head. Pull the thread a little more and say, what is it about that that I need to know? Why did that come up in my life right now? Within three minutes, you can receive a profound answer. So it's like having a genie in the bottle, but until you sit and expand your awareness, you may not notice what is always and already here to help you. Yeah, beautiful. Gosh, because uh, before we really start on this conscious journey and get down the path of ways, this whole monkey mind thing, we're, we're just bringing lots of uh, information in and this whole mental emotional thing is going on left brain. Uh, it can really be uh, quite, quite challenging. And uh, this exercise you share uh, uh, is beautiful. And uh, as well, we get uh, what once we feel the fruit of it. Um, I, for, for me, what, what I do is then I, then I start creating a whole work environment like this, where that's quiet, that's serene, that has, that, where I can see nature uh, and just step even further out with all of this. So, so thank you again for that, Suzanne. Uh, Patricia, is there an exercise or practice that you'd like to share as well to help people better tune themselves to receive these kinds of messages from these higher beings? Sure, and it's similar actually to what Suzanne was sharing with the sip of the divine. The beings of light are very aware of how traumatized and overwhelmed we are with just feeding our families and putting food on the table and going to work every day and all of the challenges that are coming up in the outer world. And they know that our time is limited as far. I mean, I know in my counseling services and things, people all the time said, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to be quiet. But God is infinitely practical and also incredibly available and simple. And the breath, as Suzanne was talking about, is our life force. It is our gift of life. And with every in-breath we take, the first breath we take as we are born into the physical plane is our breath of life. And it's the last thing we do when we leave the physical plane is exp expire through our out-breath, our last breath. And our breath carries our life force. And because of myriad activities of light and wondrous things that have happened. Very recently, the beings of light said that the earth reached a frequency of vibration that allowed our I am presence, that God self within us, which I'm sure is an expansion of uh, or, or exactly the soul that Suzanne is talking about. It's a multidimensional, multifaceted aspect of ourselves that is created in God's image. And the beings of light said our I am presence reached a frequency of vibration that allowed our Father, Mother, God to permanently elevate our holy breath so that now humanity in mass is receiving higher frequencies of prana and the gift of life, our life force than ever before. And if we will just take advantage of that higher life force, my exercise is so simple, but it is very much like Suzanne's, it just connects us. And to take a few minutes every day to in-breathe and envision that breath coming in through your heart center, through your heart chakra, up your spinal cord, out through the crown of your, your crown chakra, the crown of your head, and going directly, instantaneously into the heart of God. And we hear about the speed of light and how fast, and even when there's solar flares on the sun, it takes three or four days for them to get here. Consciousness is transmitted instantaneously. 
So all we have to do is in an instant, breathe this breath in through our heart, see it ascending through our crown chakra, through all time frames and dimensions, directly into the heart of God, the core of creation, that all encompassing omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent Father, Mother, God. And because this part of us, our breath, is one with God, as is our I am presence. All that our Father, Mother, God have is ours. So in that instantaneous in-breath into the heart of God, our breath absorbs the total of God's infinite perfection. And then on the out-breath, just a normal breath, we breathe that breath carrying the total perfection and radiance of God, back through all time frames and dimensions, through our crown chakra, into our heart, and see it flooding into the center of the earth, and then expanding through the crystal grid system, the earth, enveloping the entire planet earth. And this is creating a connection, which is known in the heavenly realms as us personally becoming the bridge to freedom, connecting heaven and earth. And this opens us a channel to receive instantaneously that open heart and mind communication. So on the in-breath, we can just say, I am one with my father, mother, God. And on the out-breath, as we breathe into the earth, I am one with mother earth and all life evolving upon her. And then know that you are open and receptive to receive that intuitive inner guidance that will assist you. And as Suzanne said, it's perfect to say, what do I need to know right now? Or whatever else it is that you want to ask. And then remain in that state of what the beings of light refer to as listening grace, just to hear that response. And if you don't hear it right away, don't worry about it. Just keep open. And it'll, when you're doing dishes or when you're driving your car or something that seems like a mundane activity of life, this new insight will just pop into your mind. The same old problem you've had over and over again, you'll see a new way of responding to it from a love based, heart based place. Yeah, beautiful. What a what a nice practice by day or night. Wouldn't wouldn't it be wonderful to go to sleep that way and uh, yes. sleep that way through the night? Um, Steve, could I add something that that, that an insight I had while Patricia was yeah, talking? Yeah, sure, please it's do. That, that all of you, all of us, as we go through these practices, can truly see a transformation that takes place in us and the balance that we achieve from aligning with our true self. And as Patricia talked about the, this, the center of you being this bridge to freedom, I had to laugh because to me in my old life, the bridge to freedom was literally this bridge that you could see from officer candidate school where I went for naval training. <laughs> and we would stand at attention and they would say, recruits, you see that bridge to freedom? You're either going back across that as a naval officer or as a lowly civilian. And they instilled us with fear from day one. And that's how you lived, you know, these opposites and and judging each other based on your position to now today having this, this knowing this bridge to freedom is innately within all of us. And it takes away all the fear, all the comparison, all the judging. And that's the journey we're on from this t- these opposites to this beautiful connectivity with all that is. That's the bridge to freedom I want everybody to find. That's yeah, oh man, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the thing here too for me that does that makes this kind of thing easier that we're talking about is, uh, that you know the of course humanities team are our uh, our mission we are all one right that came out of the conversations with God teachings and that mystics have shared over millennia and and now we've got science affirming this sharing that we're actually sovereign to one body the the scientists are jumping right out in the middle of all of this too with that we're actually designed this way that the what the one uh resides within us so that 
we don't as we're as we're doing exercises like this we're not having to reach outside of ourselves it's actually all right here right now and where we can breathe into that and come from the knowing of the divine is actually we're ex- a beautiful expression of the divine we don't have to reach out anywhere it's, she, she is present right here right now uh that these things that you're these practices then become much easier uh we're a wave under the ocean and we're we're uh, in a practice as such um, so, boy, beautiful. And um, let me just, I want to come back to you, uh, Suzanne, one more time with uh, uh, something brief um, that for both of you, I shared your your history and where you came from, Suzanne, you brought in a couple of times, you know, your, your military uh, officer past. And I would think that, uh, especially in the early years as you were make, doing this U-turn, making this big transition, that it, that might have been where uh, some of the greater challenge was, as we talk about becoming this uh, vessel or bridge uh, for uh, these these universal beings. Was were, were there any unique challenges? And the reason I'm asking you is because I think you know some of our viewers are new to this aspect of becoming the bridge, uh, feeling into mediumship and. Uh, probably could relate to uh, challenges that you might share from your early years. The, the big challenge is is going from that left brain, prove it to me, everything has to be logical, rational, sensed through the physical body, to the right brain, which knows we are one with all that is, that flows and doesn't analyze and have to question everything. Uh, to get over that way of being and not completely disdain it because it is it's very helpful in navigating this life but to find the balance this is the challenge for all of humanity right now the beings of light have told me that as a species we're out of balance so we need to balance that head with the heart the left brain with the right brain and so the challenge for me has been coming to trust that right brain side and the more i trust it the more life flows. So it's just a joy to share with people. You can trust. You don't just need to base things on what you can touch and see and hear. It's uh, There's this part of you within you that is so much wiser and doesn't deceive you like uh, the objective world. So yeah, it's been a challenge, but also a joy because with each new remembrance of who we are, life is absolutely wondrous. And again, that that fear that permeated the, the life of duality is just gone. It's absolutely free. Yeah, my my I think you know, Suzanne, my dad was a naval officer, also went to the Naval Academy. Uh, so I that that world that you speak of, I'm familiar with from when I was a young kid. Uh, boy, it um, is quite different when we when we uh, cross over this bridge and and uh, come into this whole knowing of how ultimate reality works. You know, one thing I'll, I'll share uh, that, and it comes actually from working with uh, spiritual teachers like yourself is that often it's shared. There's this afterlife review, a life review we go through at the end of our physical life. And in that life review, we're seeing through other people's eyes, our, our self, uh, and and how they felt, you know, about being there with us during this lifetime. Uh, and that's the life review. It isn't, uh, the, is, I've never heard of bank accounts or automobiles or mansions or vacations or anything being a part of that. It's it's actually just uh, people's uh, feelings uh, where they were with us during these important times during our life where we can, we can say, wow, you know, that really felt, I'm really, I felt good. I'm glad I, I was that. Or, uh, you know, oh, gosh, uh, I could have done better. You know, that really isn't how I wanted to be in front of this person. Uh, and and this uh, informs me now in this life, too, of, well, while I'm here, you know, gosh, let me let me kind of keep my focus right and do this right uh, and then uh, have a fruitful life. And when when my life review comes at the end, I can, you know, more often say, Hey, that's who I wanted to be, you know, as opposed to, gosh, I wish I hadn't th- fallen into, into that uh, groove that it wasn't serving me well. 
Okay, well, uh, let me just let me thank you, you know, again here, Patricia and Suzanne, because I think I can speak for our viewers when I tell you how incredibly valuable and inspiring this program has been so far. Uh, and now for everyone watching, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, for those of you who want to go deeper into everything we've explored today and so much more and be personally mentored by Suzanne and Patricia, uh, we're going to tell you more about the powerful, life-changing eight-week masterclass we here at Humanities Team have developed with Patricia and Suzanne is called Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New Future. Work directly with higher consciousness in the universe to create a better life and a better world. Uh, sounds like something that uh, would be interesting. Huh? We're uh, we're real excited about it, and this is our our first unveiling of this program. So let's uh, let's take a closer look. And uh, Suzanne, can you? Talk about some of the most powerful benefits people receive from what you'll be teaching them during your masterclass uh, training, uh, video trainings. Oh, absolutely. I mean, to, to learn that you're not alone, that you don't have to solve your challenges on your own, that you're always connected, that you're not only human, you're part of one big web, and that you can access this through left brain processes that get you into the right brain. That's the goal right there, to show you that anyone can access the beings of light, your own loved ones who have crossed the veil, all souls anywhere in any dimension is the goal. Uh, like you said, eight modules from each of us with practices and explanations that make this simple and very accessible. And, and Suzanne, have you ever done anything like this where you've distilled it down this way and uh, taught, in this case with uh, Patricia Cota Robles, uh, a, a program like this with this kind of focus? Well, it's the teaching is similar across all of my courses, but I really love how this one was given to me by my guides in spirit, knowing that Patricia was also going to be given downloads and that it would mesh together beautifully. So the energy is just going to be different than anything that I've ever taught. And I believe from a higher level. Yeah. And let me share too, Suzanne, because I've been through a few of your programs. You've got uh, Suzanne has a, a number of programs on Humanity Stream Plus, our this revolutionary conscious streaming platform. Patricia also has uh, programs on Humanity Stream Plus, and I love the way Suzanne, you you really bring this down in a very tangible way, where you even talk about uh, kind of where everybody sits with uh, with trainings like this, where you've got some that fall into very advanced quite easily, others where it's a little more challenging. Most people in the middle. Uh, and then as you're training, uh, usually without notes, where you're just kind of streaming it, as it were, uh, it, you bring through these practical on the ground teachings and uh, and you have and then you're stopping quite frequently where guides are saying something and you're saying, hold on. Uh, OK, <laughs> now my guide said, uh, you know, this and this and this and this is important to pay attention to something. So I just want to share your your uh, personal style is really, uh, I think, very effective too. Well, Steve, it's just a joy to model what's possible, what I'm hoping that the participants will gain for themselves, to not need notes, to really not need to prepare, to know that you once you have these practices, you apply them at any time in your life, when you need guidance, when you on in the workspace, in relationships, you, you don't have to stop and go through a deep meditation. You simply shift your focus, know that you're connected, and what you need is integrated right into your human way of life. Yes, well, uh, beautiful. And uh, even for people that, uh, that lack training, my wife and I uh, have been through a, a bit of training, actually with you all and, and uh, a few others. Uh, and uh, my wife, uh, her mother passed recently, uh, which of course was very challenging. Uh, but just through the little bit of training she had, uh, she stayed open to possibilities. And shortly after her mom passed, uh, she heard this song playing in her head from the Carpenters and was like, what? And that, that has never happened before. And it was, uh, the, it was a song about looking down from on the world and, you know, how uh, you're my uh, beautiful uh, partner and, and just these words that expressed kind of what her and her mother were in this lifetime. 
and she was just dancing, you know, for for days, having opened herself to that possibility. Uh, and then with other opening herself to other possibilities, driving, and then there's a the car with a license plate in front, Artie, which was her mom's name, and feathers and different things. So uh, I just want to say to viewers, most of us don't feel like we, as as actually Patricia and Suzanne have shared, we don't feel like we have special talent or skill here, but where we just open ourselves and don't don't get stuck under limiting beliefs, uh, there's a lot that actually can happen. And I know I know you both would share how true that is. So, so Suzanne, let me come back just as a follow-up here. Um, are, are there experien- experiential exercises you'll be offering to participants during your uh, video training uh, um, exercises? Oh, absolutely. I couldn't teach without it because my my team in spirit has has told me, teach the three E's. And that is educate yourself, which is what the course is all about experience for yourself and engage your higher self. So these programs allow you to do that. They teach you the foundations and then you get to experience through the practical exercises. And once you experience the presence of the beings of light, you engage them. So it wouldn't be complete if it weren't experiential for everyone involved. And and do you find Suzanne that, um, and, you, and again, you even break it down into categories of it. Some kind of fall into advanced and then there's the middle and then there's some that are more challenged that uh, where you work with people in a program like this, that you can really you can see results. They express a testimony to the results they feel. Oh, it, it's a daily occurrence to get emails from people who are just they have to share with someone. I can't believe what happened. And I got the goosebumps because I've been there and I know what that feels like when you think you're cut off. You think you're only human. And suddenly experiences like you, you shared about your wife, Steve, that these may seem trivial. But when you're going through grief and you have a sign that you can't deny because your heart tells you this is through a connection with higher realities, it, it, it's transformational. Yeah, and I want to share too, uh, Suzanne, even in the time that I've known you, the uh, your audience has grown substantially. So, which which is testimony uh, just on Facebook, on the programs that we have on Humanity Stream Plus, et cetera, YouTube, uh, there's uh, people really get it. And as you mentioned, it's a real advantage actually, probably that you come from like a military officer background with that strong left brain uh, and which in a sense kind of has your hand up to hey look if I can do this you know you can do this well Uh, I I know Steve that most people because the soul is inside saying listen listen want to believe because the soul knows we are more than these bodies and so I the thing I hear most often is you know if you can believe it's okay for me to believe which you know we shouldn't need permission but uh, the human side of us is always worried what will other people think so all I do is is let them be themselves which is beautiful yeah yeah wonderful well thank you and Patricia I'm going to come over to you I'll just share that uh as you as you know, Humanities Team was founded in 2003, so 19 years ago, and boy, we've come such a distance since then. Because when uh, I came out to friends and family and coworkers in 2003, that I'd be uh, that this would be my focus. I uh, it, it was much more challenging than today, where uh, in, increasing numbers of people are really getting that this is this is ultimate reality that we actually were focused on an illusion and a mirage. And uh, so it's certainly gotten uh, much easier. And now it's uh, more than much easier it, with, with all the things going on in the world. It's clear that this really is where we need to go. This, this is our uh, salvation if we're going to create a habitable, sustainable, flourishing planet. So, okay. So Patricia, let me uh, come over to you. I'll I'm going to ask you the same questions. Uh, what are some of the most powerful benefits people will receive during your eight masterclass video trainings? Well, the beings of light have reiterated many, many times that we knew what we were getting into when we volunteered to come to Earth in this embodiment. And we knew what it was going to be like. We knew how challenging it was. And we agreed to come anyway. And that wasn't because we are masochists and just wanted to see how miserable we could be. We agreed to come anyway because we were shown the new earth and we were shown that if we would apply 
the guidance from the higher realms and the experiences that we have had for all of our various lifetimes to help awaken humanity so that the rest of humanity would remember who they are and why they are here. That together, we would be able to reverse the adverse effects of our fall from grace, transmute our human miscreations that are not based in love that have caused all the pain and suffering, and then recreate uh, the new patterns of perfection for the new earth and the higher frequencies. And if this information sounds new to you, it's important for you to just hear the words that it is not. This is something you have been preparing for lifetimes to fulfill. And so what the beings of light are sharing through what I'm sharing with you in this is myriad events that have occurred on the planet that have brought us to this particular point that each and every person on the planet through their I am presence has participated in co-creating because there is no separation. It's not like there are this group of people on the planet that are saving the earth. As I am lifted up, all life is lifted up with me. So everything we do to add to the light of the world collectively raises all humanity. But now it's time for us to start participating on a conscious level. So the beings of light have shared the things that have taken place. And most importantly, to show us the incredible assistance that we are getting, the beings of light have said, our Father, Mother, God have communicated that they have been given permission to come through the veil to meet us halfway, that the earth is in the midst of the greatest shift of consciousness ever attempted in any system of worlds, and that we are collectively transfiguring this planet from a third dimensional carbon-based planetary being, including us in our earthly bodies, into a fifth dimensional crystalline solar-based light planet moving into our solar light bodies. So the beings of light have given us many powerful activities of light to transfigure our earthly bodies. They have shared with us what this crystalline light is and their activities of light. They've given us powerful tools that will help transmute the negativity being surfaced and they will help our I am presence integrate into our earthly bodies. So the classes that I'm teaching in this master class are literally gifts from the heavenly realms that have been building in momentum, that have been co-created in the realms of cause, are now filtering into the world of effects that will move us forward, literally a quantum shift up the spiral of evolution into the next octave of our learning experience to assist us with birthing and co-creating this new earth as we dismantle the part obsolete archetypes and paradigms of the old social structures that have caused so much pain and suffering, like greed and corruption and hunger and disease and all of the human miscreations that cannot exist in the fifth dimensional frequencies of the new earth. So they're coming up, not to take us down the tubes, but so that we can transmute them back into light and the beings of light have given us gifts and activities of light that will help us do this in the most powerful way available in all creation. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. And this, uh, uh, what, there are many things you're bringing through here, but this aspect of the, a lot of what uh, these challenges and darkness that we're seeing out in the world, the, the positive side of that is these are things that needed to come up for healing if we are to journey into this beautiful future that you're both describing. Uh, thank you, Patricia. So, and are there experiential exercises that you'll be offering participants during your um, exercises? Yes, several of the eight modules have powerful activities of light that have been given to us by the company of heaven. And I guide you in unison with the company of heaven through these activities of light to help shift with the divine alchemy that's taking place in our earthly bodies 
moving forward into higher and higher frequencies of light, integrating our I am presence and many other activities of light to help us take a, a serve as a catalyst to take us a quantum leap forward in our journey. Okay, wonderful. Lots of experiential exercises and that uh, really puts this all on the ground. So, so thank you. A final question for you, Patricia. I suspect many people feel a little daunted at the prospect of communicating and being guided by beings not of this earth, but uh, you've been communicating with these beings for some time as you've been sharing, teaching people how to do this uh, for a long time. So can you share something with our viewers that might they make them feel less hesitant to join in this transformative deeper dive uh, masterclass? Yes, I'll be happy to, you know, and building on what uh, Suzanne has shared about her experience of the left and right brain. I've been doing this for a very long time. And when I began was in that time frame when people were beginning to awaken and there was a, a, sh a beginning shift of consciousness. And a lot of the young people were using LSD and uh, marijuana and other mushrooms and things like that to open and shift consciousness, as well as getting into uh, Eastern philosophies and yoga and those kind of more metaphysical teachings. And then the opposite polarity of that was the fundamentalist religions were looking at this information and this shift that was occurring with fear and telling us that what was happening, anything that was being discussed that was new or different, anything that indicated that you had a God self and that you could be one with our father, mother, God was the work of the devil. And if it wasn't written in the Bible, so they had this whole consciousness of the new age being evil. And so there were these real extremes on that. Now I came, I wasn't, I was in that age group, but I wasn't doing pod. I didn't, I wasn't belong, uh, involved with a fundamentalist religion that would teach me that way. And my outer world job and my earthly experience, I was classified as normal. I didn't have to be sitting with a turban on my head or smoking pot or, or walking in the fields of flowers, naked, pretending I was a flower child, you know, in that age. And so that was what made people start trusting. But what I have consistently said is that the being information being given from the higher realms is not intended to tell us what we believe is wrong. It's rather to enhance what we already know that we have our I am presence has guided us through the exact learning experiences we needed to get to this particular point. And now we listen to this inner guidance. If anything doesn't resonate as truth, let it go. And if it is something that's important for you to understand your I am presence in the company of heaven, We'll keep presenting that information over and over and over again until it finally resonates with you. And we just have to move out of that old fear-based consciousness. You know, one of my, the, the funny thing that I've, that has always described kind of that consciousness in the outer world is one of my favorite philosophers is the comedian Lily Tomlin, you know, and she says, when we pray, it's, or when we talk to God, it's called prayer. And when God talks to us, it's called schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much true of what's happening in the outer world. <laughs> but people just need to start trusting and listening and knowing that it's okay to let it go. But what happens in my experience is that the guidance is so practical, so logical, so common sense, that it doesn't feel scary at all. It doesn't feel like, in fact, you're saying, well, why in the world didn't I think of that 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, as I was working with this problem? The beings of light are incredibly powerful and practical, and they know where we are, and they're not going to tell us things that are going to scare us or terrify us. They will never give us any information that is negative uh, just for the sake of sharing information. If it isn't something we can change and do something about, they will just work with us at inner levels through our I am presence to cope with that outer world challenge that we're going to have. Okay, thank you. 
Patricia, and and thank you, Suzanne, and and this masterclass, Cosmic Forces, that you all are describing is beyond exciting. Here's what you'll receive with your registration. Eight video modules with Suzanne Giesman. Eight video modules with Patricia Coderobles. Two live group mentoring sessions, one with Suzanne and one with Patricia. These are unique to Humanities Team. You go face-to-face -face with faculty during live and recorded mentoring sessions. This is one of the most praised features in our masterclass programs. 16 MP3 audios of the video modules. 16 PDF module transcripts. Exclusive membership in our private Facebook community and Conscious Social Network. All programming can be streamed or downloaded to watch on the go through our subscription to the Humanity Stream Plus app, where transformational education programs are available on your smartphone, tablet, TV, and laptop. Don't forget, when you register for the Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New Future Masterclass, within 24 hours of watching this program, you receive an invitation to attend a special live interactive gathering with Suzanne and Patricia that will be happening on Tuesday, September 27th, beginning at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to spend quality time on the page in the next 24 hours because you don't want to miss this. As you can see, when you register for the Cosmic Forces Masterclass as a standalone, you get a nice discount. And when you register with Humanity Stream Plus, you get the same masterclass and access to hundreds of other masterclasses, including Life After Death with the Wayne Dyer family and Karen Noe. Discover Your Soul's Purpose with Michael Bernard Beckwith and Neil Donald Walsh, and many, many more programs. And this only speaks to the programs available now. You get access to all new programming over the next 12 months. You also get invited to mentoring programs for all brand new masterclasses, Green Room Access each Wednesday for live programs in the morning and the evening, free completion certificates, and so much more. And all of this for about the price of one masterclass, about $1 per day. I'm sharing very brief descriptions, so be sure to spend quality time reviewing the Cosmic Forces Masterclass descriptions on your program page. Also, very importantly, Humanities Team is a 501c3 nonprofit. We are not after your money, and we are not trying to increase revenue and profits. Just the opposite. We want the Humanity Stream Plus revolutionary conscious streaming platform in every home on the planet. We even offer a one-for-one -one program for those who cannot afford conscious streaming. Here's how it works. When you purchase your Humanity Stream Plus subscription, you gift a free subscription to an underprivileged, underserved individual. So you are a bringer of the light. We hope you are as excited about this as we are. All of us in Humanities team are looking forward to going through together. Uh, uh, there's, of course, tremendous interest these days in the afterlife, and more and more people are wanting to be uh, a bridge for their own and collective betterment to to the afterlife. So, I want to I want to thank you so much, and uh, I want to come over to you, uh, Suzanne, with a, a final uh, invitation. Do you have any any uh, invitation like you'd like to leave with viewers here as we uh, end this program? Simply that something drew all of you to listen right now, and something inside you is is bubbling up. And that's a, the excitement. That's the soul saying, "Hey." This is the path I want to go down. This is where I'm meant to be. So follow that. It's it's when you start really listening to what's going on inside that life, like I said, becomes wondrous, becomes magical because you're aligning with your higher self. Okay, very good. Thank you, Suzanne and Patricia. Thank you again. And uh, hey, viewers, we look forward to going through uh, this, this masterclass with you. Those of you that decide to go through it, uh, it's certainly going to offer us lots on a personal level and on a collective level. So thanks. Thanks again for spending this time with us.